Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. This is going to be an absolute terrific show because we have a returning guest, highly talented, highly creative. I'd like to wait, welcome Hazel Meredith to the show. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me back. Oh, you were so terrific on the last show. We were talking about you have an ebook out. Mm -hmm. And what is the title of your ebook? Um, working with textures and overlays, turning ho hum into a work of art. And you have tons of information in there, and you're obviously an expert in this area. But we're and we have some of your pictures up here that we're going to be talking about in a minute. But I wanted to go back and get a little history. How did you get originally get involved in Camera Club? Um, I've always liked photography when I was younger, and then. My husband and I were covering auto racing for a while in the Northeast, and I decided I needed to get back to some other photography and joined a local camera club, which is the Greater Bridgeport Camera Club. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've been a member now for 17 years, and, um, and from there I got involved with our state group and our regional group and the national yeah, the camera PSA. clubs are terrific. I'm not sure if people know this or not, but um, is this, um, this might be true or might not be true in uh, Greater Bridgeport, but can people come to the lectures for free or do they have to be members to attend? You can come a couple times as a guest and see if you want to join before you do. Um, so we do welcome guests. Our season actually starts again tomorrow night. Um, well, that, we don't know who so. in, someone's watching this. So, uh, you That's know, true. Yeah, <laughs> so tomorrow night might not be appropriate. That's true. But I would suggest if they were interested in Bridgeport mm -hmm. Camera Club is that they might just Google it and get the information on, the, on your website. Mm -hmm. It's a terrific club, and I know several people in it, and they won't be disappointed. So when you got involved in the Bridgeport Camera Club and other, uh, like, state, local, regional mm -hmm. areas, but then I also understand you... You became involved in teaching adult ed at one time. I did. Um, I used to do graphic design work for the Bridgeport Adult Ed program, and the um, person in charge said, asked me if I wanted to try doing a class, and so I said, sure. Sure. So why not? Why not? Little did you know. Yeah, little did I know. <laughs> Always say yes. You know. And Always I know give it a try. Yeah, I know some people that were in it. Now, yeah. I understand you're very, very involved. You were very, very involved in. Uh, regional conferences, mm -hmm. and you had uh, uh, a leadership role in that. And that kind of developed into um, creating your own workshops. Well, how did that segue? Um, yeah, I've been involved with the New England Camera Club Council for quite a few years. Um, I actually just stepped down from the board recently, but I've um, been involved um, doing a lot of different jobs, introducing speakers at the conference, you know, working on various projects. And I've taught at other conferences around the country as well. Um, and then a couple of years ago, my husband actually suggested starting our own conference and focusing on the creative aspect, mm -hmm. which is something different than what other conferences offer. So, Well, that's interesting. And, and I, I know your husband, and he's part of our audience of one, so he's hearing me say this. <laughs> but he also commented to me, your conference is a very family feel conference. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean exactly? Well, we our goal is to keep it small. We don't want it to be a, a big huge, you know, thousand people event. Those are great and, you know, our regional conference is quite large, but we wanted this to stay, you know, 100 to 125 people where we really get a chance to interact with everybody and know everyone and say hello and and they get the opportunity to talk to the speakers one-on-one -on -one where they don't feel they're kind of lost in a sea of people. Well, that's true, because I went to your conference last year, and I can honestly say that was the feeling that I had. And it was it was very interesting because I loved NECC conferences, mm -hmm. but I also enjoyed this tremendously. Okay. We have some pictures that are going to come up on the monitor uh, of, about the opening session of your conference. and. When people see this picture of the opening session, the interesting part about it is that it's not thousands of people in the audience, but it's a very uh, cohesive number of people mm -hmm. in very, very comfortable seats. Now, if you look carefully, I'm over in the far side. I'm one of the people <laughs> with gray hair, if that makes a difference. But tell me a little bit about this. Um, if this was one of our first sessions of the weekend. Um, it's a two-day event, Saturday and a Sunday. And actually, some of the people sitting in the, the front 
of this image are some of our other speakers as well who get to listen to everybody else's classes mm -hmm. as well, which makes it nice. Um, but yeah, everybody's getting focused and getting getting started on a, the next session. And the very interesting thing is that it's a very nice thing. It's nice to have a table in front of you mm -hmm. to write. For you sure. You put your coffee there. You yep. can put and you have wonderful um, morning munchies that we you know people enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the 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 um, the I'm not sure if the word is accoutrements, but the the setting is very conducive to learning. The chairs are comfortable. Mm -hmm. The seating is wonderful. So it, it's really terrific. Now the next picture you have is. And Jerry Jones. Now, who is Jerry Jones? Um, she's a gal from uh, the Rochester area of New York, um, whom I met online, and she actually taught at our first two conferences. And um, that was one of her hands-on type sessions where people were actually working on their laptops along with her, mm -hmm. um, trying out some different techniques. Mm, good, good. Now, the next picture that is going to be coming up is Anne Belmont with something called Lens Baby. Mm -hmm. What is Lens Baby? Lens, lens Baby. Lens Baby is a specialty um, type of lens for cameras. Um, it fits all different brands. They make, you know, Canon, Nikon, etc. Um, and she is one of their specialists. So she does a lot of teaching for Lens Baby all over the country. Um, and what this lens is, generally what they do is they give you a very soft focus around the edge of the frame, mm -hmm. the picture, and then focus on your subject. And there's different ones that focus in different ways, but that's kind of the general gist. What is really nice about this, I didn't take advantage of this, but um, they allow you to borrow them mm -hmm. and go to one of the setups, or mm -hmm. you can go outside, I imagine, mm -hmm. and actually use it. That yep. makes a huge difference, and it helps you understand whether you like the lens Correct. or you don't like it, or if it, you get to consider if you want to purchase it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge advantage going to the show. Yeah, last year was our first year of, of having that opportunity um, to have those there, and that, it went over very well with our attendees. And the second day, the, the Sunday of the event, we also had loaner lenses um, from Tamron. So you could try oh. even other types of different range, you know, a telephoto lens or a close-up lens or And that's so like much that. different than going into a store and yep. looking at the lens, holding it and being done, or ordering it online. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really, it really is a, a wonderful advantage to going to the conference. Now, um, the next picture we have, we have a Cura shooting a calla lily. Um, what is this all about? Um, this was one of the setups that Anne provided. Um, she brought a bunch of backdrops, and these are things she actually photographed and then just mounted on paper. But because the right outside of our, our meeting room has these beautiful floor-to-ceiling windows, I thought it would be great to do some shooting out there with natural light. So they're using lens babies, or you could use your own lenses if you wanted, um, and you know, trying the different setups. And she brought all kinds of flowers, and there were other things as well. Um, we had shells and different mm -hmm. things that you could photograph and create little scenes. And well, you mentioned something interesting. Um, she took a picture of a background out of focus, or mm -hmm. she manipulated it in Photoshop and made it out of focus, printed it out, and then used it as the backdrop for mm -hmm. something like this? Correct. Now, what does that do? How does that improve your photo? Um, well, it lets you easily, sometimes lighting conditions don't allow you to get the blurred background that you would like with the subject in focus, so this kind of helps you accomplish that, even if the lighting isn't perfect for yes. that. Yes, and you had another workshop that uh, mm -hmm. weekend where they explained how to do that, mm -hmm. and actually people could do that, and for even though I've been involved in photography a lot, for a long time, it really was helpful to see to actually see this being done because I haven't done that before, mm -hmm. and um, I still haven't done it. But I, I do plan on doing it. I'm, I'm just saying it was very helpful to see it. It, it. It's a fun thing to do. Actually, that day we went to the rose garden the yes. group um, because it was windy and the roses weren't sitting still. I was doing some of that, shooting some way out of focus backgrounds that. Oh, I haven't printed them yet to use them, but I've used them oh, digitally oh. as backgrounds, which is So neat. you turned a very windy day to do what you planned on into mm -hmm. something. Oh, that's very good. That's very smart. You didn't tell me that at the time, but that's okay. 
Um, what is the difference between uh, shooting with with a Nikon or a Canon? I know I say the word Canon loosely because I'm a Nikon person. Then, and as opposed to point and shoot, what's the difference in your photography? Um, well, a true point and shoot doesn't have as many functions and doesn't give you quite the flexibility that you can get with a DSLR, mm -hmm. a digital SLR camera where you can change the lenses and things. Um, nowadays you do have what they call micro four thirds or the crop sensor cameras like the Panasonic Lumix or other brands, Canon makes some, I'm sure, I think Nikon makes some, where it's a smaller camera and more lightweight. Um, the lenses are much smaller and lighter, but you can still get that same flexibility of being able to shoot on manual mode or aperture priority or shutter priority. Oh, are they expensive? Um, um, they probably range somewhere between seven and eight hundred for a, a good one with a nice lens. Because I, I, we were talking yeah. before the show started about age, and the guys in the control room were dying to know how old I was. <laughs> and uh, I'm also finding out that as I get older, the lenses are getting heavier. Mm -hmm. So I might have to go up. I still have a year or two left, but you know I might have to change my. I love my camera though. It's hard to change it when you love your camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now the other person you had there to me is a guru of in photography is Mike Motes. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to go. Ooh, that's Mike Motes. And so we have a picture of some of the things that he does. He's very involved with macro photography. Mm -hmm. And Mike Motes, um, how did you get him there? Because he's famous. Um, I've actually taught at a few events that Mike was at as well. Um, and we've talked several times over the years. And so I invited him to come and mm -hmm. he agreed. And so, so we're, he was in here. a minute, we're going to have one of his images come up on the, or one of the, what he does on the monitor. <laughs> And we're going to actually see some of the work that he has. Um, yeah. Now, that's one of his workshops. Um, this is actually the, the room we use for photo ops, where um, Ann is over on the left side talking to some people, and Mike is there on the right. Um, and we had all of these tables set up, and Mike had brought in feathers and shells and buttons yes. and different things you could photograph. And then he had on the table next to it some shots that he had taken to give you some ideas of how to arrange these items and yes. shoes. And macro is, is close-up photography, so that was that's kind of his forte. Um, so between doing that and then Anne had some of the flowers over just off the left side there, um, and you, know, you had lots of opportunities to shoot. So if there was a program that you weren't particularly interested in or you just wanted something else to do and didn't want to sit in a session, you could go into this room all weekend and do some shooting as well. Well, that's a good point that you bring up because you're not you're not tied. It's not like a classroom, a college mm -hmm. course, or your elementary right. school where you have to go into certain things. You pick and choose and do what you mm -hmm. want. And for some people, I'm not going to mention any names. They might take a nap in the middle of the day. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, I'm not mentioning anybody's name. Now you have some other images of some close-ups that we're going to look at on the monitor, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the detail. Oh, this one is very interesting. This is a swipe. We talked about this in our pre-interview. What exactly mm -hmm. is this? Um, this is a technique I learned from Tony Sweet, who was also a, a well-known pro. He actually was at our first conference, and I had taken a workshop with him years ago. And it's actually um, using a longer exposure, like a half second to a second in your camera and moving the camera up and down or on a diagonal or sideways while you're taking the picture. And do you and use these for backgrounds? I do. Um, these can be, I mean, the one on the right I've actually used as an image like on a card just as an abstract Ooh. of the trees. Um, the one on the left I definitely would use for a background or a, te you know, a texture overlay or you could even take that and modify it more in Photoshop or in a Topaz program and create something totally different. Mm -hmm. And the one on the right, it almost, from my vantage point, it almost looks like it's behind glass. Mm. Do you see that? Or I do. Yeah, the whiter trees kind of yeah. gives it that look. Very um, nice. So yeah. that's a very, so again, the technique is a slow shutter speed, mm -hmm. like a second, and then you just move. And you just move the camera while you're firing, just kind of. Yeah, I used to do that with what I used to call a zoom blur. Like yep. with and and I used I've to practice, I just have mm -hmm. fun doing that. It never occurred to me to move the whole camera. 
Now, one thing is uh, you have a picture of uh, some samples of a lens baby pictures that are <laughs> going to be coming on the monitor. And um, you also <laughs> do, how is the, explain those two for me. Um, these are actually Anne's images, Anne Belmont's, um, that she had given me to use as promos for the conference. And again, you can see the different portions of the picture where like, in the one with the fern in the middle, you know, just the edge of the fern is in focus, um, where the rose, a little bit more of it is in focus. So the different lens babies give you these different effects where more or less of, of an image is in focus. I don't think I knew this. There's different lens babies? Oh, there's a whole series. There's probably 20 different ones at this point, I think. I, I thought it, uh, you had a lens baby and that was it. No, they're much more advanced than that. They do a lot of different things. Oh. I don't use them myself, so I can't explain the details and the, of the differences, but I know there, There's different there are different lenses that do different functions. Oh, that's functions. very interesting. That's very interesting. Now, you do also do a lot of post-processing. Mm -hmm. And in post-processing, you do uh, textures, mm -hmm. and you've won awards for your images, and um, and you teach about textures, and you mm -hmm. teach about the post processing, and you like to create your own textures. I do. And how do you do that? Um, sometimes they're just images I photographed, such as the blur one that you saw, or it could be anything. Could be a texture, you know, brick, grass stones. I love shooting rusty cars and trains and things like that make great textures. Um, but then you can also create your own with brushes in Photoshop. There, I do um, instructions on several methods of that in, in my book. Um, and then you can take those and further modify them in Photoshop or in other post-processing and keep creating more and more different styles. So you never have to leave your computer. Not really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Once you've done a bunch of shooting, you can just sit there just, and play. Yeah, that's, I hear that yeah. from another photographer in my camera club because he doesn't need to go outside and take any more pictures. He's got everything to work with, and mm -hmm. he spends hours every evening mm -hmm. in front of his computer. Now, we have some rust pictures coming up that you can show us. Mm -hmm. And uh, explain these, please. Um, this is a variety of things. These are some of the different things that you could shoot as textures. So we have you know, old peeling wood. Um, the brick, the one in the middle is actually rock in Luray Caverns in Virginia. Um, the upper right is marble in a church. Um, so, you know, there's all different things everywhere. And I think the next one might show the one I modified that was, oh, nope, this was actually one that I created in Photoshop. Um, the one on the left is created with three different brushes that are overlaid. And then that was a black and white photo of the rose that I actually overlaid this texture on. Oh, interesting. And that one won me a medal in PSA. Wow. So that one's done very well in competition. It, well, I can see why. I mean, you know, <laughs> but I also wanted to comment that you give your textures away. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do that? I do a weekly blog I call the Sunday Sampler. and. It, it, part of it is that I give three free textures every week. They're usually different things that I've photographed for the most part, um, though I've done a few other things here and there. And then, you know, the blog also tells you about other things I find online or if there's something new coming out from one of the products that I like, like Topaz or something, um, I share that information as well, as well as conferences and other things that are coming up. How do I have access to your blog? Um, you can find, uh, there's a link on my website at meredithimages.com. Um, and, and I can and sign, I can up, right sign up and I can, yep. I can get this free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and people need to take advantage of these textures. It saves them from going out and mm -hmm. shooting them, and they're perfect as they are. Mm -hmm. And you can also get some past textures, I understand. Yep, I have the, the last um, six months or so, usually at, at any given time, are still up on the website. And what I've done is the real the ones that are much older, I've packaged and they're like 75 to 80 textures in a package for like 10 or $15 They're on my web store mm -hmm. as well. That's, that sounds wonderful. Now, you also mentioned in photo, you create textures with brushes. Now, in my head, I think of a brush. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that what you mean? Well, it's, it's a digital brush. So it is very similar to taking a paintbrush, but there are also 
thousands and thousands of brushes available out there. Um, you can create your own out of textures. Um, you can actually take like one of the rust or the rocks or bricks and you can, in Photoshop, create a brush out of that that you can then use on other work if you didn't want to use like the color image. Um, but you can purchase or find free, and I share a lot of the free things that I find. Mm -hmm. um, you can create a whole library of different things that you can find out there on the web. Mm -hmm. And the real key to this, Hazel, I'm just going to mention this to your viewers, there's the real key mm -hmm. is after you have all of these things at your disposal, mm -hmm. one has to do it. <laughs> Yes, Jan. One yeah. needs to actually yeah. sit at the one, computer and use them. And one <laughs> needs to do it. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I know how this works. So, but before you go on, I like, excuse me, I like to comment about the photos that are here. These are just beautiful. You told Thank me you. when you came in that these are hot off the presses. Um, these two canvases are. I'm actually donating these to a charity for uh, Sunshine Kids, which is Kids with Cancer, um, the company I work for works with that charity. So these are going into an event later this month. Oh, they, this is um, just beautiful. What is it, like an auction? It, they do a silent auction. Silent auction? Yeah, a, a bidding sheet on it. And um, I've done it the last few years, and they've always gone over very well. Well, that's so. just beautiful. And you've used, obviously, textures on this? Um, yep, this one has the, the roses themselves were modified in Topaz, which is a plug-in software program that can do various things for your, your photos. And then there's some texture behind here with um, writing, which is a brush um, that I put on there. And then the word love, I just used type in, in Photoshop, and then I modified that with some shadows and Oh, it's just beautiful. The word, the word is a wonderful touch. Now, I, and I love this one. I first of all, I love that it matches my outfit. Yes. That was it really that cool. Well. <laughs> but you, you told me that these are silk. Flowers, they silk are. leaves. I bought them at the craft store. Wow! <laughs> so you don't even have to have something that's live and breathing, right? So, and this, this, the, the texture and the leaf mm -hmm. is just phenomenal. That was why I liked those when I, I saw them in the store. I thought the, the variations in the colors were great, and the pewter pitcher and the background is actually a washboard, an old small washboard um, I found in a consignment store in a nearby town. And I just did all that in my kitchen, and then I there's a few textures overlaid too to darken the background down and give it some pop. Yeah, the other problem is now is that I'm looking in consignment shops for things, and how do you store everything and organize everything? I try not to buy too much, but I do have a craft room at home, which is partly crafts and partly photography, more crafts, but I don't have time to do a whole lot of those these days, so. With yeah. all my photography. Now, I love the, the board behind us. Mm -hmm. Can you t now tell us a little bit about this board, the images on the board? Um, the one on the right is actually not a photograph at all. Um, the rose is clip art that I, I had obtained from a bundle of stuff that I bought from one of the online services. Um, so that is not a photograph. Um, and all of the writing in the background um, are brushes that I got the different colors by changing blending modes and, and utilizing different functions in Photoshop. Wow. And there's probably three or four textures on the background. It's just beautiful. That well. Is that him and Asset down in the um, No, that's actually Cape Cod. Oh, because it was, looks... I think one of the first trips we ever made to Cape Cod, uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago, um, it was a gray you know, dull sky day, and I I liked the line of the fence, but then the picture was kind of, eh, you know, one of those blah type images, and then when I started working with textures, I tried some on there, and I really liked it. I have that one really large in the living room as a three-piece triptych. Oh, isn't that nice? Which came out really nice. Now, I'm seeing your washboard in the upper left. That's actually the same washboard, yep, that's in that picture. Um, I have a washboard. I use it in one of the presentations I do, mm -hmm. and I've never con thought of using it in a photograph. I'm going to go home tonight and dig that thing out. There you go. And those flowers are also silk. Wow. <laughs> um, that was taken in my kitchen. And the writing on the, the table, like the paper that's on the table, was um, paper that a florist wraps around flowers. Yes. A friend of mine gave it to me. 
the, her husband brought her flowers and she saw the writing on the paper and she's like, oh, Hazel would like this for texture. So wow. um, my friend Loretta gave me that. And what about the background? Um, those are all tech. Actually, that one, the lace is an old curtain that I had. Uh, I was getting rid of some stuff and I said, hmm, I need to cut up some of this lace and keep it. And I just took a piece of um, foam core, like the kids use for school projects, yes. the trifold, draped the lace over it, put the writing at the bottom, stacked the books and... Uh, and the rest and very very nice very nice they're letting me know that um we're coming up uh to the end of the show but uh, the only and we have several that we're not going to get to but i did want to talk about uh, a photo uh the peacock feather that was taken on the iphone mm -hmm. so we talk about all these fancy cameras everyone has phones nowadays mm -hmm. and they're terrific images they are tell me about um this i actually took at our conference in may um Mike had brought some peacock flowers. So the one on the left is the original shot. I just took a quick shot with my camera. Then the center one has a texture, which was the wallpaper in the hotel room. Mm. Um, they had like a faint leaf pattern. And then from there, I added some more textures in um, distressed effects on my iPhone. So a lot of there's a lot of apps you can get for your oh, iPhone. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, another time perhaps we can do a show on iPhoneography because for sure. there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover, and um, and you don't need these expensive cameras anymore. No, you really don't. But but I but I really do. But I but, know I yeah. still like my camera too. I um, still do. And you know, I, a cell phone still can't compare with the the 150 to 500 millimeter lens to shoot wildlife and birds and things, but. When you're somewhere like that and you don't have a camera with you and you just want to take a quick picture, there, it works there you great. go. So, uh, Hazel, how do people get in contact with you? Um, again, through my website. They can email me directly through there, meredithimages.com. Um, okay, and I that and there just go. came up on it. And the information about the conference it would be is on that website as well. It has its own page, the Creative Photography Conference. So you can just click on that. Well, I'm hoping we can come that. back and talk again, yeah. um, maybe in three or four months, and talk more about the conference and some of the speakers. And okay. maybe we could do a little bit of talk a little bit of iPhoneography because okay. that would be fabulous. Sure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, really appreciate it. If you want to contact me, you can do that through BCTV Studio, or you can contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net. Thank you so much. Thank you. Too. Really, really phenomenal work. When I grow up, I'm...